Well, hello there. Long time no see. And welcome back to the channel. You're watching Average Man Reviews, the show where I give my uneducated, unorthodox, and unconventional opinion on a wide variety of subjects. Now, it has been about six weeks since I last uploaded. I try to upload every two weeks, so I missed uh, a little bit. Now, this is because June is a very, very busy month for my family. My birthday is in June, my daughter's birthday, my dad's birthday, my uncle's birthday, and Father's Day is in June. So it has been a birthday party like every five days. And I lost track of time and didn't get any videos produced, which is why I figured we'd go and do a really cool one to get back into the swing of things. So the Halo Needler, is from the Nerf Limited line. Now, it goes for about $100. I got very lucky. I got it on sale on Amazon for 60. That is six zero US dollars instead of 100 US dollars. I haven't test fired it yet, so I don't know what type of performance it puts out, but just evaluating it right now as a prop, it's amazing. I mean, the accuracy, the attention to detail, it is a fantastic replica. Also, it lights up. That. Let me cut some lights out so we can see the light up. Oh no. <laughs> I don't have enough flexibility to reach the light. Jump powers activate. That's something I never considered. I have pretty good flexibility in the armor to move around, but never had to get something off of a high shelf or reach something above me wearing it, so. But, I can jump in this armor, so, not bad. Anyway, back to the blaster. I was gonna show you that it lights up. Let's check that out. So, you have a selector switch right here on the side. You have three settings. You put it in the middle, it turns it off. You put it to the right, that turns it on in firing mode, so you can actually shoot it. You push it all the way to the left, that puts it in display mode. That way it lights up, but the motor is not engaged, so it will not fire. According to the manual, it will stay on for two hours in display mode. So that looks a little something like this. How cool is that? The needles light up, the barrel lights up. It's got a light right here on the side. As far as if this thing is gonna be worth the money, without even evaluating it as a blaster, looking at it simply as a prop. I just realized the lights are still out. Hold up, let me turn the lights back on. Price point I feel is justified because at a hundred bucks, if you were to try to get a Needler replica from anywhere else, there's a couple Halloween ones that are really, really cheap and don't look very good. Now, you could probably go on Etsy and find some 3D printed ones for maybe about 100 bucks, maybe less, I don't know. If it's a 3D printed kit, you're probably going to pay around 100 for it. But even then, you got to assemble it yourself because it's a 3D printed kit. You got to paint it yourself, and it's not going to have electronics. Not everybody has the time, skill, interest, or desire to repaint a prop. Some people just want to buy something cool and stick it on a shelf, which this is perfect for that. I know I'm a little bit off and I'm on a tangent right now about this, but I promise we'll get to actually reviewing the blaster and its features and everything like that. So, you know what? Yeah, that's a good segue. Let's get into the actual review and stop my yapping. So let's look at the box first. So this is the box. Nothing really special or fancy about it. It's not the type of box that acts as a display or anything like that. The Aliens Pulse Rifle box did work as a display. This one does not. It's just a box. This is the front. This is the back. It's got some cool designs, but that's it. It's a box. Let's get back to the blaster. So what you get in the box is the blaster, 10 darts. It comes with darts that are colored to look like the needles when you fire them in the game, which is pretty cool. So you get 10 darts, it's a 10 shot rotating drum. 
And the other thing that comes in the box, it comes with an acrylic display stand. That is right here. And it sits just like that. So it's already set up to go and sit on a shelf and look pretty. So I think that's why they didn't bother making the box anything special. There's no need for the box to be a display box if it already comes with a display stand. So yeah, display stand, great, great feature on the product. Now coming back to the blaster itself, um, it has a really weird feature. This piece pops out. Now I'll show you when we go outside or maybe I'll record it separately in the dark so you can see this. But when you fire all the needles, the lights actually go out on the needles. And then to make the lights come back on, you have to click this thing out, pop it back in, they'll turn back on. This is essentially like a reload button. It says in the manual that this is to give you access to where you put the darts in, but you really don't need to move that out of the way to get darts into the chamber. Uh, as far as the other features on the blaster, it really doesn't have buttons or anything else. It's it's got a trigger and it's got the selector switch between display mode off and firing mode. I can bring it a little closer so you can kind of see it and get an idea of all the little details that they put into this thing because I mean the body of it has some great details. It also has has a light on the back here and one thing I really like is that they actually disguise the battery port really well this purple panel down here is actually where the batteries go you take out two screws this panel lifts off and it takes six AA batteries inside now I used a battery voltage tester and a brand new pack of AA batteries. And you might say, well, you bought a brand new pack of batteries. Why do you need a voltage tester? Because I have trust issues. I don't trust anything. I don't trust anything. I don't trust anybody. So I tested every single one of the batteries with a voltage tester to make sure they were all full. They were, but I checked anyway. Also, I used Duracell brand batteries. I didn't get like a really cheapo brand, so... This should have all the correct uh, materials and resources to give it the best performance that we can get out of it. So, going back to the blaster, uh, like I said, there's not really a whole lot else to go over. So, yeah, I'm going to say we go outside and test fire this thing and see what type of performance we get. Let's head out to the firing line. So here we are outside at the firing line. Uh, I had to switch microphones because my other mic just broke. So let me know how the audio quality is for the rest of the clip. This is a cheaper microphone I had as a backup. So hopefully the audio is still usable. I have this loaded up with nine of the darts that it came with. Uh, the 10th dart fell out of my hand, rolled behind a shelf, and I don't feel like moving the shelf to get it, so I put a regular Nerf dart in there. It's still Hasbro brand Nerf dart. It's just a blue one instead of pink. So, we're going to fire all 10, see what type of performance we get. Okay, so 
10 shots, uh, like three or four hits. I couldn't quite tell. So what I noticed is this thing fires really high. Uh, I tried firing it about shoulder level at first. So the shots that were actually hitting the target, I was firing it about from the hip. I'm going to guess that this is because it's a revolver without a barrel. Because if you look at it, there's no, there's nothing in front of the revolving cylinder. There's no barrel to stabilize the shots. So the shots just kind of come out and do whatever they want. All right, we're loaded back up. So we got nine of the darts it came with and one regular Nerf dart. We're going to try it again. Uh, I'm going to shoot from the hip this time since shooting from the shoulder is way too high. And we'll see if we can get a few more of those darts on target. <laughs> okay, we had one shot hit the target. Now this thing has some power because the shots that are missing the target are still hitting the fence. The fence is about 45 to 50 feet away. So this thing can reach out. I'm going to do a distance test out of curiosity as well. But uh, it's definitely got some range. It just doesn't have any accuracy, which, like I said, I believe is because of the lack of a barrel to stabilize the shots. So the next thing that we can test is what type of performance do we get with better darts? All right, we got 10 of the Adventure Force darts loaded up. I'm not going to change how I fired because I don't think that's going to affect the darts. Like, I'm not going to fire from the shoulder with the Adventure Force darts. I'm still going to fire from the hip. And uh, we'll see what happens. Let's get to it. Okay, so with the Adventure Force darts, we got five hits on target, five that missed the target. The ones that missed the target didn't miss by very much. When I used the Nerf brand darts, they were missing by like multiple feet. Using the Adventure Force darts, they were missing by like inches. So one more test with the Adventure Force darts to see if we get a similar kind of performance out of them. Five out of 10 is 50% accuracy, which isn't great. Uh, I'm going to try and get a couple of more on target. If we can break the 50% line and get six or seven on target, I'll be happy. All right, I'm counting it. I'm counting that as seven shots on target. Technically, one of the shots skimmed the top of the target and hit the fence, but it did hit the target first. So I'm counting that as seven shots on target. You could say it's six, but either way, we broke the 50% line. So six or seven out of 10, that's not bad. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. It's usable at the very least. So. That's nice that it actually can be moderately well performing when it has the correct darts. Uh, I'm going to load up the original darts and step to the other side of the yard and we're just going to see what type of distance this thing can put out. And we're back. Uh, I had to take a brief pause because while moving my grill, it fell over and it cut my finger. So that was cool. So now we can actually test the accuracy on this thing. Let's see what we get.
Okay. So I fired it. Level. We know firing it from hip level is about what you need to shoot something close to you, but since the darts do have an arc, and I'm trying to see how far they can actually go, I fired at shoulder level. I didn't like kick it up or anything, but I fired it from about here. So let's see what type of distance we got. All right, so distance test. The farthest dart landed right here at 70. And we have multiple darts right here right here, right here, landed about 60. One landed at 55. Another landed at 55. One landed at 53. One landed at 48. One landed at 43. So realistically, we have a range between 43 and 70 feet, which is a bit further than I was expecting this thing to actually put out. So it does have a little bit of power behind it. I was not expecting it to reach out that far. So yeah, I think we've put it through its paces. Let's go inside and talk about it, shall we? So after action review, what do we think? Overall, the performance was the above average for a Hasbro Blaster. And I say this because I always get comments about Hasbro Blasters when I review them. The comments generally are something along the lines of, your review is wrong because this is a kid's toy and you're evaluating it as if it's a competitive blaster. The competitive blaster market makes up a very, very small portion of the blaster market and Hasbro does not care about the competitive side, they are making toys for kids. So evaluating a kid's toy for competitive level performance or expecting any kind of performance out of a kid's toy is misguided, therefore the review is flawed, and I need to be gentler, so to speak, on my evaluations of these blasters. I, I see that as a little bit of a cop-out to say that because it's a kid's toy, it shouldn't have any kind of performance. Now it doesn't need to be, like I said earlier, it doesn't need to punch holes through drywall and cause bodily injury, but half of these Nerf blasters will shoot like 20 feet. Like that's typical of a Hasbro blaster in my experience. This is a little bit of an exception because this ain't meant for kids. This is for the adult collectible market. Notice I did not say the adult competitive market. I'm not evaluating it as a competitive blaster. So this being a Hasbro blaster, this being a Nerf limited line blaster and the really bad experiences that I've had with Nerf limited, I'm pretty happy with it. We come to the question, is the hundred dollar price tag worth it? And I'm going to say yes, because like I've already said before, I don't want to rehash what I said in the intro, but as a replica, it's perfect. There's really not a better alternative on the market that has lights as well as the correct colors that you don't have to do anything to. As a dart blaster, it's functional. It's not amazing, but it's not bad either. So I give it the stamp of approval. I can't think of anything else to really go over. I think we've covered and touched pretty much everything. If there's something that I missed, please let me know in the comments. So with all that in mind, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, Average Man Reviews, signing off. And now that we've come to the end of the video, I just wanted to show off some art that I made. This is a alien abduction plaque that I made out of foam floor mats, construction paper, and markers. And in case you ever wondered, the Frankenstein plaque that sits on my uh, pegboard wall, this is the original drawing that he is based off of. It's just a Sharpie and magic marker drawing that I did, and then I chopped it up and turned it into the big plaque that you see on the wall. And in case you forgot what he looks like, I'm referring to Frankenstein over there.
So that's all I wanted to do is just add this little part to show off the thing that I made. And now I will let you get back to your regularly scheduled programming. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next.